the channel overall as a general rule, not as a hard and fast rule, is I tend to focus on research papers and uh, what is going on within the academic and the business communities during the week. And then I tend to focus on like my own research and like uh, the research from the Moonshot team, etc. during uh, the weekend overall, and generally speaking. And then so uh, with that, I'm going to showcase a model called Swarm Queen Spectral Reasoner. Um, and then there's been there's a lot of uh, people that I'm taking kind of elements from within this. So shout outs to uh, both Ben and Ash within this. I'm taking and incorporating uh, some of their uh, research and, and what they've built out into this, specifically with like um, their uh, research with regards towards the hypervector components, um, the resonance components, and then the um, vector symbolic architecture, which I'll dive into. So this Python notebook showcases two separate implementations demonstrating swarm intelligence principles applied to complex problems, task scheduling, and logical inference. Both systems incorporate the concept of hypervector computing, or HVC, vector symbolic architectures, or VSA, for representing ent entities and ta or tasks and facts. Uh, so we'll dive into exactly what that looks like overall. I see a lot of um, videos, a lot of things that come across my news feed and my feed overall where people, they take like um, transformer encoders and or decoders and they do like, different varying things with uh, transformer encoders and decoders. Like they'll turn them into like classifiers or things like that, right? Uh, and then it's like, I mean, you can do that with, with an encoder or and or a decoder and a trained encoder and or a decoder, right? So you're taking, like, in this instance, like, I, like usually it's, an, it's like Roberta Bert or something like that, right? Uh, Roberta, like some, some variation of Bert. But, um, it, it, like, I mean, why does it have to be a transformer? <laughs> it's kind of like the, the <clears throat> question that you should be asking yourself, right? Like, I see, like... Um, the the world is like fascinated with transformer architecture as a whole for i don't know like what for because the money is behind it that's the only explanation right there's no other explanation given as to like why so many people are just like they only focus on transformers for these tasks and then nothing else when you dive into these things it, there's uh, a lot better architectures um, and a lot more like um, fluid architectures that could actually <laughs> encompass a lot of different tasks. And then, so in this instance, I'm showcasing very specifically swarm algorithms and, and uh, like my uh, version of swarm algorithms, which I call swarm queen optimization, uh, which I'm going to utilize for two very different and disparate tasks, right? And then one of them will be in the realm of what most people like would classify as, what a lot of people classify as, is like human knowledge, right? Like um, being able to uh, logically reason and deduce and induce. And I'll demonstrate that for you within this. But how like my Swarm Queen optimization works and, and how it's built out very specifically is you have swarm agents. So every swarm agent is an agent <laughs> that goes out. And then to me, the swarm agents uh, operate as sensors, right? So they're going through and they're collecting sensory data in this instance. And then they pass that sensory data back to a swarm queen. And then the swarm queen is essentially just a big intelligence, a big brain, right? Um, and in the big brain for processing sensory information and, and sensory inputs from agents and then the uh, brain can make decisions can understand like the the goal of the swarm queen is to be the map maker essentially to understand the full perspective of the problem and to put it all together right every agent is so let's say that i have a hundred agents each individual agent is going through and optimizing for a specific task right um, which is uh, fine overall, but I want on top of that just a like a, a large brain that is optimizing for the whole task, like for the whole project. <laughs> and then so that's just very simplistically where Swarm Queen optimization comes in. It also solves a lot of the um, kind of drawbacks typically with Swarm optimize with Swarm algorithms um, being that they're like uh, inflexible overall, etc. So the brain it, it allows it more flexibility, right? Because the, the brain just flat out tunes the the uh, algorithm, uh, and then I give the Swarm Queen a, like a, a reward mechanism in order to do that, right? And then so the reward mechanism is based off of whatever the project is. So in this instance. Since it's an optimization task, so the Swarm Queen will be uh, rewarded for the optimization task. And then so going through this, 
looking at the code very simplistically, we have our task, our very first thing that we define. Uh, and then within the task, you can see I'm creating it again to hypervectors, right? So define two hypervectors. In this instance, I'm, we're creating an optimization task. So we have the start and the finish time, which I'll show you there. Uh, and then we're creating the agents, right? And then so the agents are, you can see sensory type, sensory type, sensory type. It's like the agents are, to me, in my mind, again, within this, just sensors. Each individual agent is an individual sensor. And then I'm passing sensory information back to the swarm queen, which is the big brain here, right? And then so you can see there's a lot of logic for the swarm queen. But so the swarm queen logic... Let's go back up. Uh, here we go. Swarm Queen, it, it starts here and then it goes down to here, right? So Swarm Queen is like uh, significantly bigger than Swarm Agent, right? Like let's call it like a one and a half times as big or up to two times as big as Swarm Agent uh, because the Swarm Queen is processing the signals, doing all of uh, like de uh, defining the adjustments. Like the, the Swarm Queen is, is taking in data and then passing it out and adjusting the agents based off of that. And then uh, we have the scheduling engine on top of that for the Swarm Queen to and the agents to be interacting with and the Swarm Queen to be getting data from, constraint penalties, so uh, how exactly we're defining the environment and the penalties and the rewards, etc. Again, like the Swarm Queen is reward driven based off of the, the project task and then so enforcing dependencies, enforce resource constraints. Then we go through and we iterate. In this instance, we're checking for violations, right? So they're, they're, what their goal is, and the, the Swarm Queen is either penalized or awarded based off of this as well, is that so uh, you have, in this instance, it's an optimization task, right? A start and a stop time. So this is the first, the initial schedule where it, it starts off. And it starts off with um, 10 violations and a make span of eight, um, which if like in order to get zero violations, the like a lowest make span score, make a span score, that you can get with this particular optimization problem is a 9.0. So if the model gets 9.0 and zero violations, it's an absolutely flawless score. Like you could not optimize any better than that. And then how this works is, so you have A, B, C, D, and E, uh, and then these are machines, right? And then these are programs on machines. And then so each individual software program takes a different amount of time to execute, to start and to stop. Uh, some take longer than others. Uh, and then you have two machines that you need to run these softwares on, and then some of them have dependencies, right? So uh, like A cannot start before C, for example, or, or like uh, C cannot start until A executes, or like, you know, on those lines. And then so uh, within that, the model has to figure out what's the like most optimal start and stop time for for uh, the different programs that are set up within it. The very first initial schedule is just like a complete randomization uh, of the uh, inputs. And then like uh, with like the like uh, make span set to like all like all of them set to like uh, one basically <laughs> and then so that's what it goes through uh, and then creates that but then of course it has errors and violations and then so the code runs and so what it happens is that it runs and then it goes through iterations until it can converge and so the swarm queen essentially like turns the dials right uh, and then has enough time to, to go through uh, and, and go uh, and turn those dials enough. Uh, and then we end up with a uh, make span of 9.27. So again, 9.00 would be absolutely flawless as far as the score here. And then you can see, I just ran this <laughs> as I was just talking about that, and it executes in zero seconds. So like, why specifically would you not use like and trained encoders and decoders on these things? The very first thing, right, is is that like you're talking about a trained encoder and decoder. <laughs> like it's not just a like uh, off of the shelf, never been on trained on data. Like even if you didn't train that that encoder and or decoder, someone did. So there's millions of dollars going into, we'll call it, into uh, training and making sure that that encoder decoder is uh, has data in order to run off of it, right? Because that's like the, the transformer architecture, we'll call it like the fuel for transformer architecture is data. Like, and there's no way around that. And it just like, it needs gobs and gobs of data. It's not... Uh, fuel efficient, it burns through, it, it treats data like ethanol and it just eats it, right? Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and then some, 
Uh, we need to start from that basis and then we need this huge parameter model so we need to run it on like GPU and 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 like it's not going to run on your calculator or your phone uh, or etc right and then it's going to take a long time to run and then to execute and then we need to train the model and the data set afterwards a whole bunch of stuff whereas in this instance it's running in zero seconds <laughs> all of this executes on doing yeah, zero seconds uh, it all executes uh, and then it's going to it's going to converge you know like at that same point like and, and i know <laughs> i just know that overall right um but so going through kind of zero seconds running purely on cpu uh, like this could i mean run on your calculator it could run on your uh watch not even a smart watch like i mean it, it like whatever device that you want right um and then it doesn't you don't have to pre-train it you don't need any feed it any data beforehand <laughs> like there's a lot of uh instances within this but it's like the uh, on the other hand it's uh transformers is known and uh, billionaires dumped a bunch of billions of dollars into it like uh okay <laughs> like that's i mean that's the the two sides of the equation like i mean this one is just obviously better like um and then so uh second thing to highlight within this right and to showcase to you is that like this architecture within this is a far more uh flexible of an architecture overall than transformers right like it's like so the scenario of like uh turning transformers like so turning transformers into a classifier and encoder or decoder into a classifier is uh one thing turning it into an engine like this an optimization engine this is something that like a transformer model would struggle with very heavily and very mightily overall like it would be a significant challenge in order to get it to solve this particular problem that we're looking at here right same thing that we're going to look at here with this particular problem uh, which is a uh, inductive reasoning problem and then so within inductive reasoning this is the kind of the the task where like transformers they they um hallucinate when it comes to a, a, this particular problem and they're not like um fully traceable right that's the other thing within the transformer architecture is okay maybe you do get correct results and then let's say that you do tune the model and then you're like hey i've tuned it i'm getting a 90 percent accuracy right like how do you know when it's 10 percent inaccurate like you're not going to be able to trace it at any point or any moment in time right so not only is it like far more architecture than you need it to be but it's uh and far more resources than you need to be but then you can't trace the output overall and then so again i'm going to run this cell here i just hit play one second on this one right so zero seconds on the first one one second on this one what did i just hit play on what we can see here is a bunch of logic inputs right so uh in this instance we've got um i've got different um people so like john mary susan sue joe etc and then they have different familial relationships and then this model is like there's none of the rules um, hard coded into this right and then this is utilizing the same uh inner core uh, to, of the technology from that top one. So hypervectors and, sw and the swarm queen agent right so we're normalizing all of this into hypervectors on creating a swarm agent creating the swarm queen all of the same type of logic but then on top of this and so they have an integrated logic engine that they're they're going towards in this instance right and then that's kind of where it changes out and then you've got like the rules that they're applying towards and then they're iterating still on the different rules so that stays the same they are they have a new class uh, called get active facts uh, and then it's just the main execution block for all of it as before right um, so I'm taking this same architecture and then so the first one that we looked at was an optimization problem which is uh, a very specific type of problem right like the traveling salesman type of problem etc and then if you're familiar with like swarm algorithms and swarm agents your first reaction would be like well like yeah that's that first one that i demonstrated that's like a um what swarm agents are like kind of built for right like that's like, like that's what they're known for is for that problem i like it because it's a problem that transformers are very bad at uh, and that these are very good at but then so this what i'm showing you here and showcasing you here i mean this is a flat out like uh logical problem right inference problem and then so like there's very few models that are very specifically like this is a uh, like would be a Bayesian model would be uh, the model that would be like uh, very specifically uh Hand, like that could handle like um this type of data up front right like you wouldn't 
give a transformer uh, model and try to train a transformer model on like this type of uh, logic overall. It's not going to be that good at it. <laughs> it's not going to be traceable. It's like the number one thing, right? Like uh, number one thing that we want out of this is traceability. Okay. So we do get results, right? How do we know that it's traceable? In this instance, I ran it for 10 iterations and then we have our final active facts and then all of our final fact iterations. And then so what we can see in this instance is that the model knows that uh, um, John is the father of Mary with very high accuracy that Mary is a female, that Susan is a female, that John is the grandparent of Susan with very high accuracy, that John is a male, that Mary is the mother of Susan with very high accuracy, uh, that John is a parent of Mary, and that uh, Mary is a parent of Susan. Uh, and then it figures out all of this, again, without any of that being hard-coded, without any sort of logic, uh, any sort of like rule-based system, like, like, like specific rules are, are built into this, right? It's all just like the, the swarms are building and, and utilizing activation functions to trigger this. And then so they're just triggering like progressive activation functions in order to solve this. Uh, and then so a few things to highlight within this. Again, pointing it out, can't point it out enough, how resource efficient and traceable this is compared to Transformers architecture. So why would you do Transformers, like a, a more expensive overall, less efficient, uh, less accurate problem to solve than this overall <laughs> and get um, these same types of results. But then secondarily, and the second thing to point out is that these and both of these problems that I've looked at and showcased to you today are problems that Transformer models are very specifically bad at overall. And then so a lot of people like try to knock um, like AI as a whole, like saying that like, well, there's still realms and um, areas where AI can't like um, do problems or, or logic or pass, you know, there, there's some sort of <laughs> differentiation somewhere along the, the lines between um, what humans do within these things as far as like breaking down a problem into smaller units and, and um, building it out from there, et cetera, compared to what these models do. But when you see what you can see is you just change the architecture and, and the model itself. And there's really nothing um, inside of the realm of uh, how these problems actually break down <laughs> that you can't build a model around um, that can actually um, handle and do these things. And then the third thing to point out within this is uh, I can't say it enough, right? The best way to look at these models is that they're um, agents that are uh, that have are based off of sensory information and sensory inputs that are interacting with an environment and the environment isn't our environment, right? In this instance, the environment, and typically the environment is the data set, the problem set, whatever you're having these agents deal with or the problem or the model deal with, that's the model or the end or the agent's environment. It's an environment to them. <laughs> that's what they're learning off of. Like how they're producing results off of it is learning off of an environment, just like any other agent would overall. Um, and then so just highlighting and pinpointing these things, uh, I'll leave a link to um, this particular notebook here for Swarm Queen Spectral Reasoner. Uh, and if you like this type of content, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much.